Hello and welcome to a quick tip tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to name your variables and events so they get categorized into nice, neat little submenus. Okay, so for this example, I have an NPC here and let's just put in a send event here and let's just say that we have a state where it's idle and then in another state, we can have it like chasing, right? So this is just an example, but imagine if it had all of your logic in here and you had something that was sending an event and what you would normally do is put in a new event that you can either put next, right? In a lot of cases, I just say next if the event, if there's only one event, if there's not much logic to it, or if there was a bool test or something like that, you might name it just like true or false, right? Or you can use syntax that is specific to whatever it is that you're doing. So, so maybe this NPC is scared and will run away if they're scared. So this bool test might be checking if they are, you know, is scared and then if it is, then you have a new event called is scared, and then you have another event called is not scared, something like that, okay? So over time, you're gonna have your little events categories filling up with all of your custom events, and you know, when you're sending off an event, you have your custom events, and then this list can start getting really, really massive. But you'll see here too that you have little uh, submenus, right? So these little submenus are a way to keep you organized so this list doesn't get too unwieldy. And you could first go to a category for a type of event. So if I'm building this dialogue system, I don't have all these events tied to my dialogue system here in this first menu. And instead I could just go to the category dialogue display. And then I have the beginning close for them. The way you do this is actually really simple. Let's come over here to our events. This might even get a little cumbersome if you had some for your player as well. Imagine if there was an is scared and is not scared for different things other than just this NPC. So I'm gonna get rid of these and instead, get rid of this too. Maybe just for this example, change this chase to run away, right? Cause they're scared, chase. So maybe it could be something like that, right? And in your idle, so you're checking this is scared. Now, if it's true, if they are scared, what you could do is make a new event called NPC space slash space, that's very important that you put your space slash space and then name whatever you want that event to be. So I would put is scared. Okay, now it shows up that same way. I can click to add that transition and it shows up that same way here. But if I change this to none, right? Let's say I was, do, I was setting up this logic somewhere else as well. Now in my drop down menu, when I'm selecting an event, I can go to my custom events and there's a category for NPC now. And now I can select is scared in here. It shows up as a transition and in the event value here as the full description, NPC slash is scared. But it's now tucked away more neatly in these little menus as NPC and then just is scared. It gets rid of the slash, right? So that gets really handy. You can imagine how much cleaner your projects can be with something like this. Of course, if you came over here, new event, NPC space slash space is not scared, okay? Same thing here. You'll see now our NPC category has these two options, okay? And just remember that at first, the FSM that you're on will only display the most recently used events in here. So if you haven't used one yet, you might still need to go to custom events and then find your category, and then it'll be in there, okay? Just a little note. Similarly, what we just did with the events, you can also do with variables. So if you wanted to do a set bool value, you can create a new variable. And instead of is scared, right? We have this is scared one. I'm actually just gonna delete this. Yes, delete it. And the bool variable, we can create a new variable. You can type in NPC space slash space is scared. Okay, and if it's set to none, then you can come in here and then NPC is scared. So it's stored in a very similar way, okay? And now down here, I can select it as well, is scared. And just like the events, it will show up in the interface as the full name that you gave it with the category and the spaces and the slash included. So if I go over to my variables tab, you'll see right here it says NPC slash is scared. All right, and that's a nice little way to keep your projects, events, and variables organized. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.